right, so here we are at the Flying Frog booth at Gen Con. Uh, this is a bunch of the painted minis that they have for a lot of their expansions here for Shadows of Brimstone. And the phenomenal paint job that they have on these right here is just out of the world. The plinths that they made, um, the level of detail for these is definitely not tabletop quality. This is something that I would end up showing um, a lot better than I would be able to paint. But it gives everybody a sense of what these minis have as far as detail and things that someone could bring out in them given enough time and skill to be able to do something like this. Like the fire on this golem here, the blood on the samurai. It's just amazing the level of detail that they've done with some of these models. Okay, and these are minis here from the uh, Shadows of Brimstone painting contest that fans uh, have brought into Gen Con to show off and try to win um, some prizes. Um, some of these are outrageously detailed, and the plinths that they created for these are also just as good as the models themselves. Um, the dioramas that you have going on here with the cultists are just... It's a crazy level amount of detail to bring to this game that is fully immersive when you sit here and play it and you're in multiple different timelines, time zones, things like that. Work here is from Aaron Lovejoy, who is an in-house painter for Flying Frog Productions. And just the level of detail and the quality of work in these minis is outrageous. Uh, his table's actually set up here. It looks like he's painting here during the convention, doing a Cthulhu miniature based off some of the artwork that he has printed out. And that's basically what I do when I paint. I try to pull it up on my phone to get as close as possible to what's available. Uh, he's got his airbrush. He's got his wet palette out here. Um, just going ahead and going to town and working on his minis. It's always awesome when you can come to Gen Con and play some of the games, but it's even better when you can come and play some of the painted games that are available. So this is Gloomhaven, one of the scenarios, and one of the artists uh, that works with Cephalofair has actually painted all of the characters and the, the using the 3D terrain. Uh, so it adds that extra level of immersion into the games. It's really awesome to see other people's artworks and... Uh, being allowed to be played as games should be, and that is always painted games. So these are the minis from Mezzo that were painted by one of the uh, art designers for the game. Uh, he ended up taking a copy home, decided that they didn't look like they should because obviously they were unpainted, and he brought them back to the studio, and they were painted. Um, some of these minis are just insane, like this one here with the skull of blood just pouring out and coming into the body. Um, this big giant go rock golem that they have here. Um, and if you notice, all of these match the art that, that he was going for. Even this giant dragon uh, snake thing that we got over here. These are just gorgeous models begging for a coat of paint. So when everybody gets their Kickstarter... Uh, eventually, everybody should start painting them up as soon as possible because there should be no reason why you would want to play this game with unpainted minis after seeing this.
So these are some of the upcoming minis from Dwellings of Eldervale that I painted during Dice Tower Con while I wasn't doing anything uh, for about an hour, maybe two. Um, this is the Iron Golem and the Croc. Uh, and right now they're doing a whole demo game um, of a bunch of different painted minis. Um, some of them were spray painted, some of them weren't, but you can see the level of detail that these models are going to have. I mean, the teeth on this croc, the eyes, the golem with all his um, crystals coming out of him. These are just really great models. The rest of them that they have here, they've been working really well um, with the community, and the, they changed the sculpts on this model here from the one that I painted because the dynamic poses always look better than static poses, I think. And so they went with a more of a dynamic pose than more of a laying one. Um, some of these other ones are really cool looking. The uh, tree ant is really cool. The, the reaper. All right. Hey, we are here at the Mythic booth uh, with Super Fantasy Brawl and Joan of Arc. Uh, we're going to go take a look at the painted minis that they have in the case right over here. Um, some of these are just outrageous. They also brought a um, copy of painted miniatures from the new Solomon Kane game that will be coming out. But right now they're demoing the Joan of Arc and Super Fantasy Brawl, which those models are just outrageous looking. The anthropomorphic animals that they have going on with the abilities and the weapons and all that stuff are just crazy. Everybody's already seen most of the Joan of Arc stuff. Um, but I'm sure they haven't seen the level of detail that's painted in some of these models. So let's go check it out. All right, so these models here are from the new upcoming Super Fantasy Brawl that Mythic is doing. Uh, they got the statues back there and then the active characters. Um, these bases all come with the things that you see on them. They just don't come painted. So in order for you to get this level of detail, all you need to do is just put a brush with some paint on the mini and start painting. Um, Obviously, you're probably not going to get the same results, but guess what? You'll have a painted mini by the end of what you're doing. Um, there's some more down here. This werewolf that's in the back with his bone armor is just out, is crazy. Like, the level of detail that they have going on with this guy is amazing. Here, we've got these Solomon Kane minis that are painted up for the game, and the... Uh, just the craziness of this game and the, the weird miniatures that you're going to be fighting the enemies. Um, you see Solomon Kane back there in a couple different uh, poses and things like that. These are just crazy. The way that they are uh, able to be doing the bases uh, molded as well as the level of detail on the miniatures themselves. Here's you got uh, what the unpainted copies will end up looking like in the game. Uh, so they'll be coming in, you know, this is a regular plastic. Uh, and then you have, obviously, the example painted. So this way you can get a feel for what the characters should end up looking like. And then you have the giant dragon from Joan of Arc uh, that is unpainted, obviously. Um, but it definitely needs a coat of paint. Um, we'll make sure that Sam gets on that because I know he's got one and he definitely needs to put some paint to his and I know he's got an airbrush so it should only take him about four hours these are some crazy looking models that they have here based on the, t uh, the YouTube channel and something that obviously any D&D &D player who loves Critical Role is going to want to get ha ha their hands on and definitely get them painted up because these are awesome looking, especially with the bases you got going on there. Those are molded bases. Those aren't stuff that, that somebody's painted on. And if anybody knows how hard it is to base a model, it's always better to have the model already pre-done. And these are really cool looking.
Hey, it's Vernon Piper again, back at Gen Con. Um, we're at the CMON booth right here with the giant um, display case that they have of painted miniatures. Um, they have some Trudvang Legends painted up. They also have Bloodborne, um, the new board game that's out here. Uh, Cthulhu Death May Die. Um, phenomenally painted minis. Uh, then Project Elite, they have some of these gray things that we don't really like talking about because, you know, who really cares about unpainted miniatures when you could play with something like this? Uh, Trudvang coming out on Kickstarter right now. Bloodborne, um, it shows there that you can let, late pledge. But these minis, as long as you have a brush and you can go out and buy some paint, I highly recommend you putting some paint to these minis because it really brings out everything in these games. Hey everybody, Vernon Piper here, day two at Gen Con, and we just had a crazy announcement at the Dice Tower Live Show. Eric Lang's newest release, Ankh, is going to be hitting Kickstarter sometime the end of this year, possibly next year. Um, the miniatures of this game are crazy looking. Uh, they are far beyond what I thought uh, an Egyptian game was going to come out and looking like. And it is something that I am extremely looking forward to be painting uh, when it finally comes out. And this is something that everybody has been clamoring for and waiting for. They want the third um, in the trilogy of Eric Lang games. First we had Blood Rage with the Vikings. Then we had Rising Sun with the, uh, the Japanese theme. And now we've hit Ancient Egypt. So the only way we can go is up from here. Thanks so much for watching another Dice Tower video. If you enjoy our videos, subscribe to the channel for more fun, comprehensive board game coverage. Also, consider joining us at one of our events. Come to Dice Tower Retreat, a small, intimate gathering where gaming is king. Join us for Dice Tower Cruise, the largest board game cruise. Attend Dice Tower West in Las Vegas for gaming fun on the West Coast or Dice Tower East in Orlando in sunny Florida. Dice Tower Conventions, the friendliest gaming conventions on Earth. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower.